Hello fellow plot questers, today I have the book that just won the Nobel Prize for Literature, the first South Korean text to ever do so. Now I read this book in translation in English and that's kind of what I'll be talking about today. So here it is, Human Acts by Han Kang. Before I start with the book review and the plot and the analysis and what I think about it, let's quickly talk about Korea and democracy. South Korea's democracy um, was won through the blood of its youth. It took incredible sacrifice. And the Gwangju democratization movement, we don't really call it the Gwangju uprising anymore, was one of those key movements that spurred the 10-year fight for democracy within South Korea against the authoritarian regime of Chun Du Hwan. My own family has lived through this time. In fact, my family was there during the Gwangju democratization movement or the Gwangju massacre in 1980 May, um, although they weren't taking direct part in the protests. And this was a time where essentially there had been a 10-year authoritarian regime by Park Chung-hee before this regime. And then after Park Chung-hee was gone, there was spring in Seoul. People thought that we could finally achieve true democracy in South Korea, only for those hopes to be absolutely crushed by a new dictator, Chun Du hwan activating martial law. The protest in Gwangju and frankly all over South Korea was an attempt to stop that authoritarian regime from taking over because people were tired of a decade or so of authoritarian regime that happened directly before it and people wanted hope. However, that hope was crushed when hundreds, perhaps even thousands of civilians and student protesters were killed, maimed, tortured and their lives irrevocably changed by martial law and paratroopers and <coughs> and that is what kind of this book I didn't I haven't read this entire book by the way I've kind of read certain chapters certain passages because I was doing research about this particular event this is a great book for the history nerds if you want to find out more about the historical stuff and human act is a book that covers the Guangzhou democratization movement or the Guangzhou massacre and it covers what happened then, and it covers the after effects of it upon the people and civilians there. So now, let's talk about the seven chapters of Human Acts, where Hong Kong captures the pain and suffering of the, South, of the Korean people and its history into some of the most devastatingly beautiful storylines and prose that I've ever seen. So let's begin with chapter one. The Boy 1980. So 1980 is ex exactly when the Guangzhou's, um, the Guangzhou uprising or the Guangzhou democratization movement happened. We don't really call it an uprising anymore in South Korea because we believe that is propaganda by the government to frame it like a rebellion when it was a protest and the government unjustifiably cracked down upon civilians with guns and tanks. This is about a boy named Dong Ho. And Tango is a middle schooler. Let, let's think about this. He's younger than I am. He might be younger than some of you guys listening here. And he's volunteering alongside high school and college students. Think about that. I'm a high schooler and, some, and I'm about to go to college. And these are people that are younger than I am or around my age. Let's, let's keep that in mind. And these people are working in a morgue. They're volunteering at a morgue because the government has just shot hundreds of civilians and they are organizing their bodies in a morgue in the local provincial office. We are running, they are running out of coffins to pe pe put people's bodies in. People are singing Arirang, which is a very famous Korean song, and people are singing the Korean national anthem, which is strongly ironic because the people that have killed these people isn't from a different country. They are Koreans and they are soldiers of their own country. And basically this, this first chapter captures Dong Ho desperately organizing bodies and with several different people in the morgue and, and basically trying to get over his own loss because he has lost his best friend. He saw his best friend get shot and killed in front of his eyes. And also he feels like that his, um, his best friend's sister who he had a very good relationship with who had been planning on going to college even though you know she was far beyond that age and she had just started redoing the high school curriculum just so that she can try to go for college and go for an educated life she feels that those all those people have been killed and taken away from him and he suspects 
that a body that he doesn't want to identify in the morgue is actually that sister, the person who was preparing to go to college, preparing to go to high school. And he one day he stays late to try to organize more bodies to help a little bit more. And the chapter ends. However, we know from later chapters that he dies because that is the day the military marches and kills most of the people in the provincial office. That is chapter one, The Boy 1980. So this is right when the Guangzhou um, democratization movement or the Guangzhou massacre happened. Let's go chapter two. Chapter two is the, is the Boy's Friend 1980. So we're still in the same time period. So The Boy's Friend references Zhang Dei, who is Dong Ho's friend. Um, if you remember, Dong Ho was Dong Ho watched his best friend die in front of his eyes. That is Zhang Dei. And this chapter is in the perspective of Zhang Dei's ghost. Zhang Dei's ghost is piled into a garb into the back of a truck, like a sack of garbage. And then he's disposed of in these land in these in these landfills, essentially, because they dig out these holes in random places and shoves their bodies in. Like they're not even human bodies. They the it is incredibly hard for me to talk about this. Okay, what? Well, how can I? Yeah. So because they're they're dehumanizing people. These are people's bodies, people who had lives, and they're just completely disrespecting them and essentially treating them like they aren't human at all. And um, Korean culture, we take this very seriously because we have we're a Conf Confucianist society. We um, we believe that a proper burial is necessary for a soul to be at peace or else um, our, in our folklore a lot of the ghosts and and monsters within our folklore is actually just you know people innocent people or people with a um, a grudge remaining after death because they weren't given a proper burial or something within their lives wasn't completely finished so this um this entire chapter is almost like a reference to that where essentially Zhang Dei's ghost is trapped within his body he's unable to leave because he hasn't been given a proper burial and you know he feels all this confusion why why are soldiers of our own country killing us right and he feels within his his heart that his sister is also dead and he's just wrought with confusion and anger and he sees all the other souls around him trapped in their bodies unable to leave and that is the second chapter so the first and second chapter are both set in 1980 during or basically just in that year of the Guangzhou massacre or the you know democratization movement and essentially it captures exactly what happened in the tragedy of Dong Ho and the tragedy of Zhang Dei the third chapter is the editor, and the editor is set in 1985. So this is five years after the movement. So between 1980 and 19, so for around 10 years after 1980, a fight for democracy was alight in South Korea. And so 1985 is still, people are still fighting for democracy at this point. So Eun Suk is the name of one of the girls who are working to identify bodies within chapter one alongside Dong Ho. And she's now working as an editor. However, she gets interrogated and slapped um, because she has ties with a writer who made a play that is essentially a huge middle finger to the authoritarian regime. And basically she recounts like how she can't forget what happened that day, how she regrets Dong Ho's death, and basically um, she watches. She then watches at the end of the chapter a play um, that is heavily censored, where the actors aren't saying the lines, but instead mouthing them because they are censored. And she drops a tear because she recalls Dong Ho and his tragic death, and is riddled with guilt and sadness about why he died. That is the editor five years after. Then chapter four is the prisoner, which is 1990. This is in the perspective of an unnamed prisoner. We don't know the, their name. And this is about Jinsu. So Jinsu was also one of the people that was mentioned in chapter one as one of the people helping organize bodies within the morgue, right? And essentially, Jinsu was tortured. He was captured in the provincial office and he was tortured in unspeakable, terrible, inhumane ways that I don't even want to describe because YouTube might take me down. So um, this is basically about 
Jin Su slowly, in chapter one, Jin Su is described as a promising young man, right? He is incredibly smart, he's organized, you know, he looks a little bit feminine, but that's about it. However, because of that feminine look, he is tortured in prison in unspeakable, in unspeakable ways, and that trauma, that PTSD, remains with him for the rest of his life. He's unable to function in society because of those memories, he attempts to take, regain control of his life, but he's completely powerless and he's unable to do so. And the chapter finally ends with his... And that is chapter 4. Chapter 5, The Factory Girl 2002. So, this is obviously very quite recent now, this is 22 years ago. And this is about Sunju. Now, Sunju is another one of the girls who was working at the morgue. So, you know, we got all these characters that witnessed the tragedy of Dong Ho, right, during the Guangzhou massacre. And basically, she is. She also recounts kind of her 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 um her work as a labor movement against the government again in those ten years against the government protesting against the, against the government. And she has been tortured in uh. She, yeah, she was also tortured in these terrible, unspeakable ways to the point where she's now unable to withstand the touch of a person, especially if they are a male. Um, she feels extremely uncomfortable when any guy looks at her in any kind of way. And, she, and a university professor keeps asking her these questions, ask, um, wanting an interview with her, but she declines because she's just unable to face those memories. Chapter 6 is the most heartbreaking chapter. Um, this is the one that has made me cry, and this is The Boy's Mother, 2010. So, this is about what happened to Dong Ho's mother after Dong Ho's death. She extremely regrets not pulling her son back from the provincial office by force, because that's she tried to convince him at the end of chapter 1 to come back, but Dong Ho said he'll be back, it'll be fine, but that's what led to his tragic death. We see her eating grass and then throwing up um, during the funeral in front of Dong Ho's grave. We see her unable to assimilate into society. We see her protesting against um, Chan Du Huan's regime. Um, and finally, at the end of the chapter, we see her somewhat regain some sense of peace, I hope, um, while recalling memories, early memories with Dong Ho of his curiosity and his vigor as a child. Um, but it also amplifies the tragedy of the situation because this young kid, this kid, a middle schooler who had a promising life ahead of him was brutally killed in this manner. We all have a family, and I think that's why this chapter really got me. The seventh and final chapter is the shortest one. This is The Writer 2013. This basically outlines Han Kang's personal connection to the story because she used to live in Guangzhou and when she moved away, her old house was bought by Dong Ho's, um, by Dong Ho's uh, family. And she talks about how she basically came to write this book, talking to people, talking to Dong Ho's family, um, all of these things, and that, that's kind of the seventh chapter. So that was the plot summary of Human Acts. Woo! That was really difficult to get through, um, like the book, because the book was extremely difficult to get through. So let's go some, let's do some light analysis, then let's wrap this up, shall we? So, um, analysis. I think some of the most devastating things within this book is the use of second person perspective littered throughout the book. So, second person perspective is rarely used in literature because third person and first person are just much more widely used. So first person is the usage of I, so like I did something, I, you know, I walked over there. Um, and then third person perspective is like, he did this, he pulled out a sword, he drew his weapon, right? That, that is um, first and third, and this is second person, which is you. Sorry, you. Um, so look, let's get this. Looks like rain, you mutter to yourself. What'll we do if it really chucks it down? You open your eyes so that only a slender chink of light seeps in and peer at the ginkgo trees in front of the provincial office. 
as though there, between those branches, the wind is about to take on visible form, as though the raindrops suspended in the air held breath before the plunge are on the cusp of trembling down, glittering like jewels. When you open your eyes properly, the tree's outlines dim and blur. You're going to need glasses before long. So, as you can see, this is quite different from a traditional novel, which is using this you perspective. And I think that really emphasized to me um, how this could be you, right? Like it's addressing the reader as you, you are, it, that amplifies the immersion. You really lock into the scene and feel like, yes, you're imagining yourself doing all these things because Dong Ho is just a normal middle schooler um, and, and she's just a kid. And I feel like the use of second person perspective is really just so devastating in terms of how you feel like this could have been me if I was there. Um, and this is just another normal person whose life was brutally taken away um, due to this ridiculous, absurd authoritarian regime. Um, I think the also, um, I, I mean, I just read a good passage. So just stemming from that, the visual imagery is insane and the symbolism is quite insane. It's extremely beautiful, but it's very, how do I describe it? It's very, not nonchalant isn't the right word. It's very minimalistic. Um, it almost reminds me of hard-boiled um, sentences, which is um, Camus' very iconic style of writing where he only writes the exact necessary um, style of writing where he only talks about the descriptions that is strictly necessary. Now, it's not that because it's beautiful. It describes things in great precise detail, but it's almost like it's being beautiful but also it's as minimal as possible, if that makes any sense. And it's also, what really makes that special, however, is not that, but the, 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 but the emotion that the visual imagery conveys. Um, it's beautiful, but it's so sad. It's, it's, it has the underlying feeling of grief, of melancholy, and almost rage and anger as well within the visual imagery if you look through the book, obviously I only read that one chapter, um, and the metaphors that she uses, like she talks about when she describes the piles of bodies within the second chapter with all the people being piled up using several metaphors that I like describing them as like a twisted dragon or something similar to that. I can't remember the quotes verbatim. Um, also amplifies this, basically how great this book is. Um, the usage the themes of tragedy, the, inabil in the inability to forget, and the deep emotional scars that, the, that this one event or 10 years of events left on the Korean people, I feel like is encapsulated also really well by those devices. So that's enough of analysis. What do I think about it? So this book was extremely difficult to read. Um, it's made me cry multiple times. And I think like it is masterfully written. It is amazing. And I think like if you're Korean, you should read this because this is our country. This is Korea's story, right? And I didn't know about this at all until I read this book. I didn't know that we had, that's the Korean version of the book, that we had such tragedies happen in our country because, you know, Korea modernized so fast. We feel like, you know, that kind of stuff only happens in, in, in those ancient days, you know? But then you realize this is 1980. It's like... 40, 50 years ago, it hasn't even been a hundred years. People who have experienced this event are still alive now. My parents' generation was there, although they were quite young. So I think this book really just allowed me to connect with my own culture even more and just be thankful of the fact that we have a functional democracy now to the point where, you know, obviously there's corruption and politics is politics, really annoying, but we still have the ability to impeach our president. We still have the power of the people controlling the government. For example, we impeached um, our president and got them out of office when we needed to. So that shows that we're one of the only Asian countries that really did that or one of the only countries that actually uses this democratic power. So I think that's a really great sign. And I think this book just conveys how we shouldn't forget about this history. And the, just how important democracy is because we just go oh, democracy is great great but we don't really understand we don't really feel why it's important it's important because it prevents stuff like this from happening 
and I think it's just human act is a great title for this because the original title is actually 소년이 온다 which is like the boy is coming or the boy has come um, which I think is also a great title but I really like this English title because I feel like you know human acts it sounds kind of grand and you're like okay human acts you know we we are knowledge we found truth it, it feels like a positive thing but it also encapsulates the bad things the atrocities that we commit to each other for reasons I guess and I feel like this this book d- does exactly that it it encapsulates the beauty of humanity our our will power our indomitable spirit to fight against oppression but also just the disgusting vile things that we sometimes do to each other and I feel like that title just fits really well I really love this book I would rate this a 10 out of 10 which is very very rare for me um, I don't there aren't that many books that have achieved that within this selection of books behind me and all the books that I've read I think it's incredible and I think um, you know a lot of now people know Korea by K-pop and webtoons and all these cool things and I and I love that but I feel like you know if you really want to know more about Korea read Human Acts um, there's a reason why it got a Nobel Prize in literature and if you're Korean definitely read Human Acts because this is our story right um, if you know more if you want to know more about the actual event read this book this is the most comprehensive look into the Gwangju uprising um, or the Gwangju Democrat I, I keep calling it uprising because that's what the title says but we don't say that anymore um, and this is a great review honestly this is more readable than some other books that I've seen which are very academic and very difficult to read but this is like okay you can get down and kind of read it and feel it flows you know it's it's written to be read so definitely check this book out if you want to know about the history part but if you're just if you just want to you know know more about Korea's history and democracy and want to read something amazing terrible tear-jerking um, read Human Acts. Deborah Smith does an excellent job translating. And that's about it from me today. Have a great day, everyone. And like always, your plot cluster, Aaron the plot cluster. Um, yeah. Okay, I finally did this review. That is too hard. Okay, yeah.